Greetings. I hope you've all been having a wonderful week. Welcome back to Mavanwinia Studio here in Leitrim's Iron Mountains. My name is Harriet, and today I will be sharing another short Drawloween time lapse in my sketchbook. I'm working from the prompt list from Mab's Drawloween Club. Today's video footage is from day 11, Tarot. You can view all of my completed Drawloween artworks on my Instagram, at Mavanwinia. I will add a link in the description box below the video. For this drawing, working again in my mid-tone sketchbook, I started loosely sketching out the composition with a white colouring pencil. I'm then building up and defining the sketch with a contrasting black pencil, then filling in blocks of detail, continually reshaping the lines and tonal values with an eraser. I'm using primarily the black pencils from the Derwent black and white tonal colouring pencil set for the main bulk of this drawing. The blacks in this set include a standard black, one with tones of blue and one with green tones. You will see the difference in each of my character's hair tones. I'm gradually blending in brighter colours throughout the drawing with Faber-Castell classic colouring pencils. This gives the black shading a depth of colour and helps create an atmosphere in the piece. I will link my tools and materials below the video. For this prompt, my first instinct was perhaps to choose a single tarot card to draw, but as someone who reads tarot, I felt I was not in the headspace to choose a card to focus my energy on. I guess I'm a little superstitious about pouring my energy over any one tarot card without prior planning or purpose. So I decided to draw a tarot reader and her quarant or inquirer. Even the cards on the table are represented a little vaguely. Overall, this was a quick little sketch, taking me about an hour or so in real time. Tarot is a form of divination meaning the practice of seeking knowledge of the future or the unknown by supernatural means. There are many different ways of using the tarot. It is often referred to as a mirror. Tarot is a tool for reflecting the energies surrounding the inquirer. These influencing forces or energies reflect back through the cards. They take on the form of an archetypal language of pictures, characters and symbols arranged in various sequences after seemingly randomly shuffled by the quarant. There are many different spreads or ways of arranging the cards for various types of readings, depending on the type of knowledge that is seeked. Their most common usage is for understanding the state of an individual psyche at the instance the cards were shuffled, mapping out your psyche or a portion of your current life path. That old esoteric maxim, as above, so below, displaying a portion of a greater pattern. It is being revealed as the veil of incomprehension is briefly pulled aside. Perhaps Carl Jung's theory of synchronicity comes the closest to giving us a quasi-scientific explanation. The word means meaningful coincidence, a term used by Jung and the eminent physicist Wolfgang Pauli the two great minds collaborated in an attempt to define clusters of coincidences. There are 78 cards in a tarot deck, the major arcana, which means the greater secrets, and the minor arcane, which means the lesser secrets. 22 of the cards, the major arcane, are the main symbolic or archetypal language in the tarot deck. These cards, in a reading, would represent the main energies surrounding the quarant. Depending on the position in the spread, these energies can be past, present or future. These past and present energies are all in a state of flux or movement, as all astral energies are. We change them by shifting our paradigms or understanding and gaining new meaning or personal growth from our acceptance and changed perceptions of the self. Sometimes the cards can help us gain clarity and insight towards personal paradigm shifts in our own path. The spread of the tarot card is often referred to as a path, especially in a linear reading like past, future, present. An example of this would be a simple horseshoe spread like the one depicted in my drawing, used to quickly look at the path unfolding and the directions it's heading. The minor arcane is four suits. Each suit has 14 cards, ace to 10, then four court cards. 
At a glance, it clearly resembles a deck of traditional playing cards that most people are familiar with. Indeed, you can do divination with these cards as well. The four suits are wands, also known as staves or batons, corresponding to clubs on the playing cards. Pentacles, also known as coins or discs that corresponds to diamonds, swords to spades and cups to hearts. The actual symbols represented in each of the minor suits appear elsewhere in myths and legends of Ireland. The legendary people of the goddess Dana, the Turididanan, spoke of four magical treasures, a cauldron, a sphere, a stone and a sword. Similar symbols appear in Hindu art, a cup, a spectre, a ring and a sword, and in the Greek goddess of fate, Nemesis, whose symbols included a cup, a wand of applewood, a wheel and a sword. Such symbols are also linked with the four elements. Wands are fire, representing your power, passion, will, intent and drive. Earth is pentacles or coins to represent materialism and wealth, personal possessions and income. Water is cups, dealing with emotional thought over logical thought and spirituality. Then air is swords, mainly representing the ego, logical mind and personal thoughts. In turn, the four elements form one of the foundations for Western astrology, which groups the 12 signs of the zodiac into four larger groups, each governed by its element. The major arcana remains elusive, for it does not correspond to anything we can recognize today. With this, it has spawned an imaginative range of theories regarding its origins. Ancient Egypt is a popular background for speculation. Some stories connect cards to the writings of Hermes Trismegistus, the legendary writer of the Emerald Tablet, and other such magical manuscripts. A culture closely associated with tarot is gypsies, a word that is believed to have derived from the Egyptians. In some speculation, these gypsies are believed to have brought the cards from India on their travels. Another myth of the cards is that when the Great Library at Alexandria was destroyed, the ancient city of Fez became a gathering place for mystics and philosophers who traveled there from the four corners of the earth to help them communicate with each other. They created a symbolic pictorial language of their own design to encapsulate universal knowledge and spiritual truths. Myths aside, the earliest existing tarot cards date from 1392 and only 17 of them still survive. 30 years later, an Italian artist called Bonifacio Bembo painted the only full deck which survives from those times. They were commissioned by the Duke of Milan and named after his family, the Visconti deck. As a tool for divination, tarot cards can help analyze problems, clarify the decision-making process, or help you understand better yourself and others, and help the mind escape from logical and habitual thought patterns. Self-awareness is essential both when reading the card and understanding what the cards are telling you personally. Self-knowledge and self-acceptance is what all forms of serious divination are really about. Spending time in thought with the deck while you shuffle the cards, asking your questions. As you do this, the belief is that you are summoning the energies close to the cards to align your synchronicities for an accurate mapping of these energies. Attune to the symbols in the cards, take as long as you need. Some believe it is important to cleanse the cards before they are shuffled. You can do this by knocking three times on the deck. The first knock, we put forward our intent or wish to cleanse the deck. The second knock is to say thank you. The knocking is also supposed to prevent evil spirits from interfering. When the cards are used to predict the future, they can be uncannily accurate, but invariably point to possibilities rather than probabilities. If interpreted correctly, they can direct the inquirer to the forces or energies shaping their path in life and often suggest choices or courses of action. This place the responsibility of the revealed knowledge in the inquirer's own hands where it ultimately belongs. There are countless tarot decks, and artists are constantly creating new variations. I too, back in 2009, had created a series of paintings with tarot as a central theme. I will add a link to this body of work on my website if you are interested in that below the video. 
Many tarot decks are based on the classic Latin tarot, also called Tarot de Marcellis, such as the famous Rider Waite Smith deck, and they all have specific meanings based on the card symbolism, numerology, and the varying positions they appear in a spread. Most decks come with a little description of each card to help you get started. The meaning of each tarot card is open for interpretation, depending on which deck you use and the feeling you get from each card as you progress through a reading. Developing your intuition is a big part of the tarot, as it is with any divination practice. We are coming to the end of my time lapse now. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful week. And I hope to see you again soon for another video. Bye-bye.